Okay, well, welcome back. And what I'm going to show you here is some of the things that I will look at prior to deciding which body of water I'm going to be fishing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at um, the, all the different musky lakes and rivers within my area. Now keep in mind that I am uh, currently living in the Pittsburgh area, so I'm going to be looking at the state of Pennsylvania and using that as an example. So <clears throat> when I go to Google, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to musky stocking PA, okay? And what's going to come up is a link to the PA Fish and Boat Commission, and they are the ones who manage the musky stocking programs uh, for Pennsylvania. So I'm going to click on the top link, Muskelunge PA Fish and Boat, and then I'm just going to scroll down to the interactive maps. And we're going to go to an interactive map to find out uh, where the, the musky waters are. So we're going to go to warm water slash cool water fisheries for waters known to have musky. And this is the first thing I'm going to do. So when I click on this, it's going to pull up an interactive map, which is going to give me options for any kind of fish, not just musky. <clears throat> so, of course, I can narrow it down to, um, uh, you know, bass and, and things like that. But, again, we have an option here in a numbering system for uh, select two for musky, pike, and pickerel. As you can see, there are other types of fish that you can, uh, you know, narrow it down to as well. So if you're into maybe, you know, bass fishing or, or catfish or walleye, I know a lot of people are. So maybe that'll be helpful for you. Okay, uh, so we're going to select item number two. So if you go to the top left, you're going to click on musky, pike, and pickerel, and you have these check boxes which are going to narrow things down for you. So uh, I might want to say, hey, I want to, you know, any body of water really that would have musky in it. So musky streams or rivers and musky lakes. Okay, and so you can see that all the streams are uh, the blue rivers here, and of course all the little red dots are going to be your uh, lakes and reservoirs. So we'll click these off to give ourselves a little bit more real estate. And um, now you can see all of the different uh, lakes that, you know, have musky in them. So we'll zoom in a little bit. And um, as you can see here, within the Pittsburgh area, there really aren't that many. And so that's why I have actually taken my tour and expanded it to two hours, maybe two and a half at times, because, you know, normally I'm going to have to go up north uh, because there's a lot of... Uh, you know, musky lakes up north and, and even to the uh, west a little bit, or to the east. So uh, we're going to take a, a very good musky lake as an example here. And uh, one of the best musky lakes in uh, western Pennsylvania is Pymatuning Lake, which is um, on the border here of Ohio and Pennsylvania. So we're going to click on that, and when we click on that, it's going to bring up um, you know, some regulations and general directions, but we're going to look at the stocking information to try to find out, you know, how... Um, you know, how has the stocking effort been uh, for this lake? Do they do it every year, every other year? Um, are there other fish that they stock that could potentially hurt the muskie population? So we're going to click on the stocking uh, report, and this is super nice. A lot of uh, states, unfortunately, don't have it to this uh, quite level of detail here. But uh, what you're able to see is, um, essentially, you know, going back to the year 2000, it doesn't go anywhere before this for some reason, but um, it basically says that, uh, hey, in the year 2000, they stocked musky, purebred musky. Um, if it was tigers, it would say tiger musky. So purebred fingerlings, um, and they stocked 5,000 of them. So um, the PA Fish and Boat, they stock different types of different size muskies. Um, so they'll do fingerlings, they'll do small fingerlings, which are even smaller than normal fingerlings, and then they will stock um, yearlings, which are fish that they are stocking every other year. So they're fingerlings that they allow to grow basically twice the size, and they've found through the research that, um, th that the survival rates are a lot higher for muskies that are yearlings as opposed to fingerlings. So, so they're starting to do that and introduce that a little bit more. So um, this lake actually is about 17,000 acres, and um, so I can see that they only stocked 5,000 of them. And then, and then they increased to 7,000. Uh, yearlings uh, were coupled with 7,000 fingerlings in 06. And you can kind of go down the line and kind of see, you know, how they're doing. So they look like they're, they've been actually putting more in here. Um, and this isn't even taking into consideration if the fish are naturally reproducing or not. So um, you know, they've increased it to 12,000. Um, and, and now they've actually started to do some yearlings. 
uh, 10,000 yearlings is a lot. So that's pretty cool. So we could probably come to the conclusion that due to the consistency of the stocking efforts, this is a very good musky water. One of the other things I do is, um, you know, I might go to, um, <clears throat> you know, just type up that lake on Google. So Pima uh, Tuning Lake PA and, um, and just try to get some information about it. So maybe I go to the, uh, the, the government website here and it's going to tell me, you know, is this a natural lake? Is it a, a reservoir? Um, you know, what are the hours? What are the boating regulations? Uh, you know, obviously there's a horsepower limit on this lake, so I'm not going to want to go roaring around in my 40 horse motor. Um, so information about that. And then I might want to get a little bit more detailed. So I'll go into <coughs> fishing map of Pima Tuning Lake. Nautical Charts uh, puts out a really great interactive map of most lakes if you look it up. So um, here it is. So I'm just going to click on the map and pull it up here. And uh, this basically gives the break lines. Um, and this is free. Novonix also has an app if you pay for it. Um, it can actually you know, show where you are in relation to some of the, the break lines and spots. But uh, this is good. If you zoom in here, um, you're able to see you know, where the drop-offs are, where the break lines are. And... Um, you know, <clears throat> where the boat launches are in relation to this. So, of course, if I zoom out, I can say, hey, my plan for this weekend is to launch at Red Cross, and uh, I'm going to come right out of this channel, take a right, because I can see that there's some cool islands here uh, with some nice drop-offs around them. So I can come up with a plan just by looking at that. And, um, you know, oftentimes, too, some of these maps will uh, highlight good fishing areas as well. They'll say, hey, we saw a muskie here, we raised a muskie here. Um, and, and you can focus on those areas as well. Um, and then uh, the last thing I do is I actually go to uh, forums for that lake. So um, Pima Tuning Lake Muskie Fishing Forums. And um, you can see here that there's a nice one right at the top. Now, this is from 2009, so you want to you know, keep that in mind. But there's a lot of, you know, if you really dig, a lot of really good communication going on between different fishermen. Um, you know, this guy says, hey, you know, are there any muskies in Pima Tuning? I never hooked into one. Uh, I never see any of the guys trolling. Is it a dead sea or, or is, you know, are they all on the north end? And then, of course, if you scroll down, um, you know, <clears throat> you can kind of see, you know, what people are saying about it. Um, this guy says, hey, I saw a show while uh, a back uh, on the Next Bite show. Had a complete episode on the Pima Tuning muskies. So, oh, that's kind of cool. So um, then you can go to YouTube. And uh, and uh, go to the next bite and maybe watch his his episode. So you go to YouTube, click on the next bite, and uh, you know when you go in here, maybe you can see uh, potentially some uh, you know episodes on muskies. And uh, yeah, you can see that they do have you know a couple episodes that they did. Um, these are some of the things I do uh, prior to going out um, on the water. Uh, but of course, probably the best way to get to know a body of water uh, is by actually spending some time on it. So uh, we can do as much research as we want, but of course, uh, it's not going to do us any good unless we uh, put some time out in the water. So um, let's head out on the water and we will show you some of the things that I like to focus on when we fish new water for the first time. We'll see you out there. All right, what's going on? So we have arrived at the lake. Um, it's not really a lake, it's like an oversized pond. It's only about 96 acres. Um, but it's new water and it's natural water. We've been fishing reservoirs and rivers uh, for quite some time now and so now we're actually fishing, uh, fishing uh, a natural glacier uh, lake slash pond and uh, that means that there's probably going to be some weed structure here, which is really cool. We haven't seen weeds in a while. Uh, so when we fish new water, we want to focus on a couple things. One of the things you want to take a look at first is water temperature. It's going to give you a really good idea of where the fish are. If the water temperature is in the low 70s, then uh, or 70 like it is now, uh, the fish are going to be kind of up close uh, uh, along weed lines, up close to structure, and that's really what we're going to fish first. Um, the second thing is we want to look for weeds and we want to look for weed lines. We're in a really nice spot here with some weeds. 
uh, in about five or six feet of water, which is really good. So we're going to cast there uh, with some surface lures to try to see you know, what the fish are doing. And then uh, last but not least, we want to focus on presentations that are going to cover the most amount of water. So, um, you know, we want to fish things like spinner baits and, um, you know, like what I'm using right now, top water. Um, you know, things like, uh, you know, maybe some faster moving um, swim baits and things like that. So, uh, you know, after we cover all that water, we can then finesse the area, go back to some really good areas that we like. But I think it's really good just to, um, you know, do a, a nice loop of the, of the, of the body of water kind of see what uh, you know what the structure looks like what the lake looks like and from there we can uh, you know start really honing in on some some areas